Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. And today I'm taking a look at bricklayers. I did a video on this quite a while ago and I'll post a link above, but I've decided to revisit it. And I just got to thinking about users' comments, particularly on setting up post-processing script. In some case, you have to install Python. Again, I'll get into that in a minute. But with that being said, let's take another look at bricklayers. Now, I realize this has been covered before, but I thought I'd just give a brief review of slicing and the idea of what Bricklayers is doing. If I scroll up here, what winds up happening? And that I'm using blog post on CNC Kitchen's website, and this documentation is really good with the description. If you look at this model, you can see that the layers are laid down vertically and the stresses that are pulling in the same direction as the filaments laid down are the filaments actually really strong. Now, if you have a model and the stresses are perpendicular to the layer lines, the print is significantly weaker and it can delaminate and basically just come apart. Now, the idea of brick layers if you've ever looked at a brick wall, the bricks, rather than all being lined up evenly, are basically offset between each brick. Now, why is that? If you go down here and we look at this model and look on the left side here how the layers are offset, that actually makes the layers and the interface between layers stronger. And based on testing, it does indeed make it stronger. Perpendicular stresses, stresses that are perpendicular to the layer lines, the stress and the strength and the force needed to tear the layers apart should be greater. And so again, the brick layers is the idea of once you slice your model, the processing script goes through and then reconstructs the model so instead of, as it is on the right-hand side, all your layers being even, it creates this brick effect. Now, again, using this awesome block post, I can look at a regular sliced model on the left. And again, all the layers are lined up. And then look on the right, and that's the brick layers. Again, you could sort of see everything is not exactly lined up and looks much more like a brick wall. So again, you're increasing that strength. And if you look at the website for CNC Kitchen, you'll notice that in the stress tests, the strength test results are showing brick wires are stronger than the traditional print. And that's pretty much across the board. Now, it's not necessarily a huge increase, but it is an increase nonetheless. And depending if you're building structural or parts or something that maybe, again, you're not using as much infill, but you want it to be strong as possible, brick layers adds another dimension to your print. I'm going to switch over and show you the traditional way that you use the brick layer scripts. So I've loaded this model in. I can do a traditional slice. So let's go over here to strength. And I'm just going to change this down to 10%. Better yet, let's actually go up here. I'll change to 15, click off of it, and then slice it. Again, pretty normal, what you'd expect. I could go through and look at the model. And you can see nothing looks different from this. Now, the script I'm using, which is from Tanager Technologies and also Geek Detour, I'm using both implementations to how I'm setting things up. You install this script on your machine, and then you basically send it to Python, so you need Python installed. It takes the already processed file, the saved G code you've just done, and then manipulates that G code. This is where you would run the script. This runs after I export it out, it would save and reprocess it. So for some users, installing Python becomes a bit of a hassle. When I did my original video, I installed it all on my Mac. Installing the Windows is different. Things work a little bit differently. And again, that can make a user nervous, particularly if you're not familiar with programming or Python. Now, how did I solve this? 
created the little web app. So now, rather than actually have to install the post processing script, what I can do is let's go over to my slicer. I can simply take my model and I'm going to get rid of this post processing script. Let's just slice the model and I'm just going to export this G code. So I'm exporting the G code, saving it to my machine, and I'm just going to save it in the downloads folder. So I've saved it in the downloads folder. And then I can go over to the little web app I built. I can go in and let's select the Benchy I just sliced. I can change the wire height, change the extrusion multiplier. I'm going to click apply the effect. It takes a couple minutes to process. The file is not being saved to my server or it's actually being streamed and just saved in memory. And you can see it automatically downloads the new file and then puts on the abbreviation brick and then the name of your file. Now there's a couple interesting things when I've done this. So let's look at my file browser real quickly. Now, if we look at the files, I have the vanilla file, which is about 1.1 meg. The new file I generated is 1.2 meg. So I'll process the file traditionally. My finder here, you'll notice here's the trad BL, and that's actually 1.4 megs. Now, the difference is the script adds a little bit more verbose comments in the G code. If you've ever looked at G code, it's basically a big text file. And I've done some analysis. My implementation is slightly smaller, and that's because I'm not using near the comments that are in the original script. Now, real quickly, let me pull up and show you the differences between the models. And you'll see there's really not a difference. Now, here are the three models I printed. Now, keep in mind, I didn't optimize this printer. So there's a little bit of flaws. Now, if you look at all three models, you really probably don't see a difference between them. And in my case, I had to actually sit here and number these. Now, I have to look at this, look at the numbering on them. This one is the just regular Benchy. Again, that looks really good. Now, this one, number two, is the Benchy with the traditional brick layers. If I were to hold these side by side, I don't really think there's much of a difference. And you probably, I mean, here's a little string in, but that string in more has to do with me not picking out of this post anything else. And then lastly, here's my model that is done with the web app. Again, not, not any real difference. And I also need to make sure I don't drop all the models. So there's not a real difference between them, at least visually. Now, time-wise, let's take a quick look at the print history and just verify what I'm saying. Now, here is the results. This first Benchy is the Benchy that I just did a regular print. That took 29 minutes, 49 seconds. The brick layers with the traditional code, the script, 30 minutes, 14 seconds, and then processing via the web was that same 30 minutes, 14 seconds. All told, you're looking at about a minute difference between the regular Benchy and then the Benchy that's using the brick layers. So if you've been reluctant to try brick layers or didn't know how to configure Python, hopefully this web app, and it's available on my website, I'll put links in the video description, you can go ahead and give it a try. And this will let you test brick layers without having to install or configure Python on your own machine. Now, I hope you found this helpful. I will point out to anybody, if you run across any other post-processing scripts, let me know. I'm always looking for content for my website. This app is free, as are all the apps I've put together on the website, although I do add some features that are for my Patreon supporters. So if you wish to support the channel or help me out in any way, anybody that subscribes on Patreon, I appreciate that. And that means a lot to me. But anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Have a good day.